go. And welcome to Trigger Charts, the uh, morning rundown for Friday, pre-market rundown for Friday, June 14th, 2019. I'm Andrew Horowitz. We have our sound working now. We had a little bit of a glitch in the matrix there with terms of our sound, but hopefully that's working right now. Uh, we have a lot to talk about today because of in interesting action going on in the markets. And we're going to go over some of the things that are really important to look at. First of all, I want to just quickly pop up these important disclosures that you need to take a look at and uh, see what's going on here. Because of course, this is for educational purposes only. Uh, it's not as a uh, use, should, nothing should be used as a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Use your own judgment, do your own research and make sure that you are understanding the risk parameters related to your particular situation. So with that, uh, a couple of things that are going on here. I think that are really important to look at. We have a Fed meeting that's coming up next week and there's a real big interest in this. The idea is that, hey, you know what? We're gonna see a rate cut. Uh, and, and on that note, I wanna ask you, I'm gonna kind of click this polling right now. Uh, it should be popping up on your screen. Is there gonna be a rate cut next week? Quickly answer yes or no, we'll get a little bit of a, a temperature check at what you're thinking here. And uh, so right now, Fed futures are estimating about a 34% chance of a rate cut next week, about somewhere around 80% rate cut by the July meeting and possibly two rate cuts by the end of the year, which is really interesting because if you think about it for a second, what we had was a situation where the, the Fed was on a rate hiking regime and a regiment that they were continuing on autopilot for some time into December when all of a sudden everything started crashing around them. We have an inverted yield curve that really got much worse from December to where we are today. And the idea that the Fed is going to have to pull down rates on the short end to try to level off and change the dynamic of that yield curve is very important. So right now we have a predominant amount of people that are saying that we have a rate cut that actually will be uh, occurring sometime in the future, but not next meeting. As a matter of fact, uh, it's about 82% of you are saying that uh, there will not be a rate cut, which is pretty much in line with what I'm thinking as well. Uh, about 18% have said, nope, there, uh, there, there will be, yeah, we're gonna have a rate cut. So that's kind of interesting. That goes into our discussion of probably what's happening with the markets, what's happening with currencies, what's going on, with the idea that, you know, let's kind of push it out into the future. So that's something that's really interesting. We have a lot of people on today. We're gonna to try to get, as a matter of fact, we have a great crowd. It's been growing each and every week, which is really great. And thank you so much for joining us uh, because we are trying to just provide you some really good information and insights, help you out with your trading decisions. Uh, on the right-hand side of the screen, hopefully you can see this, we have um, the, uh, I'm gonna kind of make this a little bit smaller right now, just for a moment here. Uh, you can see this is the S&P 500 uh, indicated by the SPY, in, uh, SPY ETF. And what we're seeing here is this significant amount of movement that we saw recently to the downside, of course, into June, that's that swoon that happened in May. And then uh, a baseline that we got through our moving averages, the 50, the 200, the 100 day moving averages, got some support on an area that there really wasn't support to be had, but with the idea that, hey, you know what? Why are we selling? What, what's the point here? The Fed's got our back. That's kind of what's going on here. And uh, right now we're at a point that's a pretty interesting inflection point because if you see the box that I put on the top of this area, what we're seeing is that there is a altimeter or, or market profile algorithm that showed through the trigger charge commander series that there is in fact a level of resistance. We got right up to that resistance level. In fact, I'm just gonna put my cursor right there. We came down right into support. The blue line is significant support. That's our high volume node. And I'm just using just the altimeter right now to show you this. Um, and right now we're kind of in a little bit of a consolidation area. Now you can look at this a lot of different ways. We're above the 50 day moving average again, we're above the 200, we're above the 100. Those are really good institutional indicators of direction. We're also seeing that generally speaking, the moving averages are sloping a bit higher. Okay, that's good but we are starting to see a little bit of a, kind of a, just a tad of a move on the 50 day moving average that kind of dipped down a little bit, starting to move up again. Um, but what we're seeing here is the continuation of strength on weakness. And what I mean by that is it's by the dip. There is a by the dip mentality that's been around for uh, 10 years because we have ultra low interest rates. We have a lot of liquidity in the markets. We have the opportunity to move into stocks because well, there's not much more that you can do elsewhere. When you see that yields on 
the 10-year, on CDs, on money markets are lower than the yield and dividend yield on stocks, a lot of people are choosing to move into stocks. Makes sense. So let's close this down here. Let's move this back up a little bit. And let's talk about what else is going on. So we know that yields are obviously moved down. We moved from about three and change down about 100 basis points on the 10 year. We see that there is that yield curve inversion that we talked about a few different times ago. And by the way, if you want to look at any of the pre-market rundowns from the past, you can go over to triggercharts.com. You can also go over to our YouTube channel where we started posting these right after these finish. So you can check out all the past ones and what we've talked about. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about the inverted yield curve. And we showed you a chart, showed the belly of the curve was really dipping down significantly. That is oftentimes a precursor to a recessionary period sometime out nine to 12 months into the future. Now, of course, we're hearing that from the Fed that it's really not the best indicator of a future recession. They're not worried about it. Okay. They weren't worried about the housing market in 2007 either. So take what they say with a grain of salt. The Fed is not all-knowing, all-being. What they have are a few very blunt tools that they can utilize in the markets. They do that successfully because basically they flood the markets with liquidity. They flood the markets with cash. They flood the markets with low interest rates. And that is all very good. It's created a bit of a monster right now in terms of debt. And that's a problem. But depending on how you look at markets, depending on how you look at valuations, it's not the worst thing either, as long as it doesn't get totally out of hand. I had a discussion with somebody yesterday about this and the whole idea of, well, maybe looking at the idea that there is significant deficit spending by companies isn't the worst thing in the world. Maybe they can withstand high deficits, high debt, just like Japan. But at the same time, basically Japan is a zombie nation at this point. So can't last that long. Uh, we did see that the small cap signal, where is a ratio of small cap to large cap, cap stocks, is trending down and has been doing so for some time. That is not a great indication for markets. While markets did in fact pop up recently, and we are seeing obviously a very good year for the markets in 2019, there's an indicator that talks about how risk manage managers look for higher quality in times there maybe is some geopolitical uncertainty, maybe some risk factors that they're worried about, maybe there's something that's going on involved in uh, the markets that they're not really excited about. Well, what we're seeing that is play out pretty well in the area of the uh, small cap to large cap ratio. You can look at the IWM divided by SPY, put a chart over history on it and take a look at that. And there's something very significant about that when you see that risk off trade where small caps are really not picking up a lot of interest. Um, one thing I did wanna show you here, if I can bring this up is, I'm gonna switch screens here just for a moment. This is the KRI, this is the key reversal. Actually make this a little bit smaller for you. I'm gonna bring it over to the middle. There you go, you can see it just fine there. This is a key reversal indicator. What this is, it looks at just one thing and one thing only. This is a, uh, another indicator that you can get over on the trading app store at TradeStation. And uh, Kevin is with me, helping me out today. He'll put that link in the chat for you to check it out. Um, this is a really interesting situation that we're seeing. So we saw back a number of days ago, about 10 days ago, right about in this area here, where we're seeing that there was a cluster formed. These are oftentimes when you see these green dots form, good buying opportunities. Historically, we've seen that over time where you see, let's see if I can bring up a few others, possibly some selling points on here when they're overbought, oversold. We got a little uh, graphic right here that gives us where this is and where the um, items are right now. Right now, we're seeing about a plus two on the level. What you want to look for is a plus six, a minus six, a minus five, a plus five. Those are kind of overheating and oversold levels. Let me explain something to you, though, and make this very clear. This indicator does one thing, and it does one thing only. It does it pretty well. It gives you direction of the markets in a big picture way. We look at this once a day. We say, okay, where are markets? Where's the trend? And we can see that right now, for example, uh, when we look at Let's take a look at, uh, for example, let's see if I can pull up a quick um, area. We can see that there's this over here, there was all this kind of overdone and over um, bought situation. Now, over boughts, they, they resolve sometimes to the downside. Oversolds often resolve to the upside pretty significantly and pretty quickly. 
So we use this as a kind of a market pulse, seeing what's going on in the markets to understand, okay, should I lay out more on the trade? Should I kind of maybe just partially do trades, a, a smaller portion, a half position usually, if I'm not really exactly clear. Right now, if you look over here, we had that there was this uh, down move and the, and the momentum was kind of changing from a high. And then we got, again, right about here, this cluster formed. And oftentimes that is a significant buy signal, at least to ramp up on a low that there is a change about to happen overall. So the KRI only uses the SPY only, only. There's no other stock you can use. There's no other symbol you can use. No other futures, no Forex, nothing. SPY, it looks just like this all the time. And essentially what it does, again, it just gives you this kind of notion of where it is that you can lay down some interesting opportunities and trade. Now, one of the things that I also wanna show you here is what happened right there. We don't get these that often. This is that December low. We get a massive negative seven number here, all the way pinned down to the bottom, okay? We see that? All the way down to the bottom. And then you get a magenta bar, very rare. What is that? Back up the truck, buy in. There's an imminent change happening. That's why the indicator is called the key reversal indicator, right? Key reversal. We're looking for these reversal points on a chart to find out if there's opportunity. And what could you have bought? Well, pretty much anything. You know, you want to go buy futures, you want to go buy um, stocks. Pretty much this was a signal that things are exhausted, crazy exhausted down to the downside and something you may want to take a look at. So that's also available over on the trading app store. All right, so a quick check. We have uh, the futures right now down 36 on the Dow. We have the ES uh, S&P futures down 5.7. We have the Qs, which are being hit due to the fact that Broadcom, Av the old Avago, Avago coming in with uh, Avago, coming in with uh, really a concerning number on the chips, talking about a very difficult environment, and that's really creating a downstroke in in terms of the uh, the Qs. Uh, gold was picking up. It's up about eight bucks right now, and uh, we're seeing that crude oil is about 15 cents. Uh, today we also saw that, um, and this week we saw the CPI was tame. We saw that markets uh, reacted very favorably or generally favorably to this, this number. Retail sales today came out as plus 5.5% uh, uh, versus plus 0.7%. And if you look at X autos, uh, you see about uh, uh, 0.5 versus 0.4 to the upside. We're gonna see the University of Michigan later today, leading indicators, FOMC rate decision, and housing data next week. Basically, the theme for this week is geopolitics. We've got the G20 meeting coming up where President Trump has said, hey, you know what? If President Xi Jinping is not gonna show up, we're gonna raise tariffs. We got the Fed meeting and we got the Middle East tensions that are picking up. So how about we get to some of your stocks? You can start loading up some of the stocks inside of the chat and I'll get to those and I'll analyze those on a variety of different time frames, and take a look at that. So make sure to do that. Uh, let's check that out. I wanna look at gold for a second here because gold is kind of interesting. We've kind of been highlighting this over the last couple of weeks. And we looked at this particular line in the sand, right? We saw that if it broke out from here, it would break out. And we're seeing that it tried a few times on the right-hand side of the chart. And uh, what's interesting here is when you, when you look at this, this area, of the chart and you see right now, we did see it pop up initially into the morning. Things were concerning about Iran, all of that. Retail sales came out, the dollar started rising, gold started moving down um, and we're still above the level. If you notice here, there is a yellow bar that's a long alert on a daily basis. We've seen a few false breakouts before over to the left-hand side of the chart. Uh, but basically, where are we right now? I mean, it's a gigantic consolidation. We saw this whole fill, that was that round circle we drew last week. We saw the hole move up very significantly, move back up off of support. Where is gold? It seems to me that gold is still in breakout territory. The potential for gold to continue higher from here is very significant because again, if we kind of zoom back a little bit, we always do this, remember this? What do we always do? We always look left. We always take our eyes and we move from right and we move and we look to the left. And what do we see here? Well, the levels that we see is a breakout potential. We couldn't get there today, right? Let's see if I can kind of draw a straight line here. Yep, right there. That's the level that we hit today. Back on the 25th of March, we saw that there was a, um, a level that was a high point on there, right in the area uh, of where we are today. It tried to get through there today and then bounced and was rejected. Now, 
Will we hold support? If we hold support, I do believe that there is an opportunity. If the Fed does not increase next week, I think we have an opportunity. So take a look at gold. At the same time, we wanna also look at the gold miners, right? So the gold miners are also pretty much eh, to a degree mimicking what we see involved with gold because obviously that's where they make their money on the sale and mining of gold. So when we take a look and we look left and kind of just kind of go over this way, we can see that there is some resistance line. There is a resistance line that is right about here. Uh, and you can see that very clearly. There was an area of uh, th that, that breakout attempt that happened. So it's still not as good, but what we are seeing right about on the right-hand side is that there is a level of interest here now because the altimeter, which is part of the commander series that you're seeing right now, is calling for a long entry on the gold miners. And if you see a breakout above here, what do you have? Because we're looking left, right to left. And we're looking to the left, what you're seeing is that there is this opportunity for a breakout. If you get above this, above this level, about 2350, 2360, which we are seeing in the pre-market right there, there is an opportunity for this to really launch very significantly. So I would watch this very carefully. Let's uh, clear my drawings, let's go back to my mouse. All right, what else do we got? Oh, I wanna show you the, the dollar. Uh, the dollar has been, if we put in, I don't think we have this right here, but if we have a, no, I don't have a 50 day moving average. If you look at a 50 day moving average, it's bouncing right off its 50 day moving average each time very interestingly. By the way, if you don't know, there are micro e-mini futures that are now available over on TradeStation. Uh, these trade at about, I think it's one-tenth the value of a regular, I believe it's one-tenth the value of a regular um, e-mini. So you can get in at a much lower cost factor on that. There's uh, the micro e-minis and there's also the Qs, the micro e uh, 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 Qs, uh, the uh, NASDAQ 100. So again, load up some of your stocks. Please do me a favor, don't be shy. Throw me a couple of stocks, throw me a couple of symbols. You wanna look at Bitcoin, you wanna look at Litecoin, you wanna look at futures, you wanna look at a particular uh, commodity. How many people trade commodity, agricultural commodities? That's something that's interesting. All right, let's take a look at a couple more and then we'll get all to your stocks here. Facebook, Facebook's coming out with, uh, there's an announcement that they've been talking about this, some kind of a cryptocurrency payment system it's pretty much like Facebook credits. And it's being backed by MasterCard and Visa announcement today about this. I don't know where this goes. I don't know if they're trying to just put the crypto in there. Maybe they're gonna to try to sell meatless burgers next, try to bring their stock price up and to uh, try to turn your head away from some of the regulatory environment that they have a problem with. But right now it looks like the Facebook situation is that um, we're seeing this major dip that happened here uh, we definitely have to clearly get over the $180 level, which it's kind of stuck at right now, about 180 and a half, I would say. But then you got some more resistance at 181. So not much right there. Uh, SMH, this is the, uh, this is the, 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 uh, the semiconductor ETF that's available. Now, when you look at this, and, and, and I want to look at this in a couple different ways, because when we look at this chart, I want to throw the radar on here. And again, all of these things that you're seeing on the top, are available as the, um, in, in a package. It's a package that's very easily installed into your TradeStation system. It's available for either TradeStation 9, TradeStation 10, whatever you're using. I really encourage you, there's a 10 day free trial on all these. And if you look at all of the reviews, we have a hundred and something reviews. The number one review, by the way, in the whole entire trading app store in terms of number of reviews, that's gotta tell you something. And the reason why I'm really pushing you here is, this is a 10-day free trial. Check this out if you haven't installed this yet because you're gonna find that, wow, wait, wait, whoa, this makes things a lot easier. I got color coding. I got levels that are very clearly designated by volume-based index. So what we're seeing here is not just a simple price indicator like you see with the moving average, but we're seeing where institutions, where players are putting their money, where they're drawing their line in the sand, where they're actually saying, hey, you know what? This is where I'm gonna buy. This is where I'm gonna sell. Very easy. So make sure to go over there. Like I said, Kevin will give you that link uh, over on that. Also, just to let you know, there's a lot of training videos available. Very basic, start you off, get you going. And all of the indicators that you see here are preset with all of our default levels uh, and our inputs that we think are the best. But you can go over to triggercharts.com and there's an area on there that's all these videos that show you exactly how each one of these works. So. Uh, I think that's uh, a pretty good area to check out. I'll mention one other thing, by the way. 
Everybody pay attention to this. This is pretty important. If you, in fact, want to look at and actually purchase uh, and you go and you subscribe, um, anybody that subscribes to the Commander Series will get a four-hour tutorial coaching session that's online virtual available to, you to use to train you on all of this, to explain all the details about everything on there. So make sure to check that out. Anyway, getting back to this, getting back to the semiconductors, we're gonna see a drop here, about 2.5%. We saw a nice little rise up. Obviously the Huawei situation in China is really hurting things. It's really causing a lot of problems in terms of what's going on with regard to this. And I wanna tell you that we're probably gonna see a lot more pain ahead in the technology area. And what you're seeing now with regard to what's happening with Broadcom with their announcement today, uh, let's see where they are today. Let's take a look is really what's being uh, flowed through. Right now, it's down about 8.5%. You can see that uh, over here, right about here, uh, down about 8.5% today. So that, that's kind of important to look at. Uh, and that's really driving down, you know, AMD. Just think about all the semiconductors that are out there. AMD, oh, let me type that right. AMD, uh, down about 2.5%. So you're seeing some slowdown in this area right now, semiconductors, probably some weakness in the NASDAQ and the tech names across the board. Um, mentioned that a couple of earnings things. RH came out with earnings. This was a restoration hardware. If you want to buy a couch for, I don't know, want to buy a couch for $12,000 that's uncomfortable or maybe comfortable, go over to restoration hardware and get yourself a great couch. You can get a coffee table for a mere $4,500 as well to match on one side. Uh, but uh, bottom line is that uh, they came out with earnings much better than expected, came out with guidance much better than expected. Stock was up about 28% yesterday after falling from a whopping 150 down to about 80 recently. And that was this year. I mean, you look at where it was, kind of that drop that we saw into last year, you know, and again, 160 went down to 105. So this was a, a pretty ugly situation here. Uh, we're getting, a, yeah, let me, let me go over your stocks here. Let me mention this now. Um, so Nick is asking, he's asking the question about what is the target for QUID, Q-I-D. Now QID, let me just bring this up to show you for a second, not, not to get you all confused here. But QID is the ultra short Qs. So basically what this is, is a leveraged um, investment through an ETF in the Qs. But what we do, Nick, this is really important. This, everybody needs to listen to this, it's really important. We don't look at a derivative of any of the indicators of the stocks or of the ETFs. For example, if you're using options, if you're using leverage, we wanna look at the core position itself. So what we look at is Q. And then what we do is we translate that to quid. So right now, where are we? So if you think about this, let's say using a, a two-time multiplier for an ETF, let's just make it simple, it's a double. So right now, uh, QID, let's just kind of get back there for a second, if I can, QID, enter. So this is just to see what it says is ultra short Q shares. So this is the Qs, Q, Q, Q. So we're gonna go back to Q, it is ultra short Q, okay? So where's the target on this? Well, as I see it, and I'm gonna take the radar off to make this really easy to see. Right now, it's in an uptrend. It is a long position. Right now it's trading at 102 and uh, 182.51. So it's trading still right on about right there, 102.51. Um, so I would say the downside potentially for this, uh, when you look and we go from right to left, we look right to left. I'm going to draw this on here to give it very clear uh, and see if I can make sure that, yep, right there. See that? See how I can connect several lines across from right to left? Very easy. All you have to do is draw lines. We learned that when we, we were four years old. Just draw a line from right to left. That's how easy it is to use our indicators. That's the whole point of it because I need it personally, to be easy to use, okay? Um, and when we look at this, I would say 176 or so is probably the downside. So when we take that and we look at 182, we say about six. Now, where is that? Where's my calculator? Let's do that real quickly. Let's do six divided by 182 or so. It's about three and a half percent lower from where we are. So if you have a double, we look for six and a half percent lower from where we are and find out what that price is. It's very simple, easy to look at, and that's how we would do it very uh, easy. Same thing with options. You use the core and the base, and then you go and you look for where the opportunities are. Uh, yep, thanks, uh, Nick. Yep, get that free trial, check it out. All right, we got a few things. We got at C, we got corn. Oh, my typing skills are not working so well. At C, enter. 
All right, let's do something different. At C, enter. There we go. Corn's breaking out. Wow, look at this daily. But look at that. Uh, this is great, great, great chart. Great chart to look at here. But what we're seeing right now is I'm going to use a different tool here. We got this big old consolidation that went on for some time. Once we got over that top, and you can probably draw this consolidation all the way over to here. And once we get over that top, it's a breakout. Where does corn go? Well, again, what do we do? We simply look left. What do we find? I mean, right now it looks like um, I would say about uh, corn at 464 is probably, or actually probably 462 is the top end. So you got another 20 points on this if this does continue moving higher. Pretty interesting chart. Nothing to the left. That's the main thing. You know, when I look at this and I look at the areas, you know, I kind of, my checkbox, right? I look, look at these holes right here. There's nothing in this whole area. So, you know, the opportunity for this to move up similarly is kind of good. So I think that's kind of uh, an interesting one to look at. Um, we got INSY, I-N-S-Y, enter. I keep on doing this. I don't know what my problem is here. I-N-S-Y, enter. Uh, when we look at INSY, uh, is it INSY or is it INSY? Yeah, INSY we talked about last week, there was a hold. Stock got clobbered, potentially more problems. Stock is down to 40 cents. What I touched is, I told you last week, I zoomed in on this, I said there is a hold possibility, there's good support, but until it does in fact break, I would not get near there. So this is Friday, uh, Thursday, Tuesday, Monday, Friday. So yeah, so look, we, we did break out, came back, that was the trade. When it reversed down, it told you to get out and it moved down much more significantly. This is just not a good play. I just don't like it very much. Uh, BVS Crypto. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Kevin, uh, hey, you're funny. Uh, we can't do BVS Crypto. I don't think it's, I don't think it's on this system. It's, I think it's only uh, Litecoin and it's, um, there's a few others on here. Netflix, NF, no, X, enter. Uh, Netflix. Netflix is in nowhere land. Uh, you know what? Does anybody else see a consolidation here? Right? We see a consolidation here, don't we? There, there, there's, I mean, there's this tremendous consolidation that's going on with Netflix. Um, if you just simply, you know, draw a, a box around here. I think there's a market open here. You know, you do have some downside potential. Uh, market's open. So let's clean that real quick. Uh, you do have some downside potential here. And what you're seeing here is the opportunity for Netflix, honestly, to come back down. Where do I see it going from here? I mean, you got some decent support about 335. If it doesn't hold here, right now it's on support. So that's, that's an important area. So it is on support, it's holding support, desperately holding support. When you look from right to left, again, when we simply draw this and we just draw very simply right to left, we see support right there and it's going way back to the left. So you know that line's on there and can stay on there and you could kind of hold there. So Netflix looks like an interesting opportunity to short, but really, unless it gets below, right, this, this level here, I don't know if I would really look at it as a short. You really need to pay attention to this because it does drop, it's gonna drop quickly. And then where's your next line? Your next line is somewhere around the 300 level. So keep that in mind. Uh, let's see if everybody else. All right, listen, hey, thanks everybody for joining us. Before we go, I just wanna make sure you're all clear. Oh, we have one more stock. Wait, 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 don't go anywhere. Got one more, oh, look at that. This is a company that makes clothing and supplies and stuff for the workforce. You know, if you see people walking around in a uniform, that's what Cintas does. How do you like this chart? Obviously this goes along very well with employment. Chart showing me all clear. There's nothing here on the aileron that shows me anything that's a problem. There's nothing showing me from Altimeter that's a problem. The trend is, I mean, the trend, I mean, look at this, this trend is, look at that. I mean, you're just holding pretty nicely. Got a beautiful channel trend, I didn't draw that perfectly, but this looks pretty good. I don't have any problem with this all time high area for Cintas. What you need to look at for Cintas is more of the macro backdrop. If in fact we do see that jobs start to maybe slow. So anyway, uh, with that, I wanna thank you. Make sure to go over to triggercharts.com, check out our YouTube channel, make sure you like it, do all the good stuff with that. Um, and of course, get your 10 day free trial and sign up because if you do get the Commander Series, we will send you that four hour course that you can use $199 value. So with that, I wanna thank everybody for joining me and we'll see you again next Friday for another rundown. Tell your friends, make sure to tell your friends. Thanks a lot.